This news program is proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and Mnow Biscuits. Government to find doctors who are compatible to the system. Members of Parliament raise questions on investigation into high-profile crimes. And government to close PNG trade office in Taiwan. A very good evening. You're watching National MTV News. I'm Godwin Eki. Thank you for joining us. The Minister for Health, Dr. Lino Tom, said the, one of the short-term measures that the government is looking at are to find doctors within our region who are compatible to the systems that we have in the country. He said the government is looking at increasing capacity in all the medical institutions to produce more doctors to match the number of growing population in PNG. He made this statement in response to a question raised by Governor for Morabe, Luta Wenge, to bring in overseas doctors to operate in PNG. Governor for Morabe, Luta Wenge, said it is very difficult to bring medical services to all parts of Morabe province. He said Papua New Guinean doctors are not willing to get to those difficult areas to provide medical services. He asked the health minister if PNG could get foreign doctors to come in and provide more needed health services to the people of this nation. The health minister clarified that his number one priority right now is the health workforce. To put this question into perspective, he gave a couple of figures stating that in this country, we have about 602 doctors. The normal accepted rate for a doctor to population ratio set by the World Health Organization is one doctor is to 1,000 people. However, right now, we have one doctor is to 17,000 people. He said the medical school that we have in PNG has been producing a constant number of doctors and it hasn't gone past 60. Simply we don't have the numbers to actually cater for our population. We need to look at some short-term measures and one such short-term measure is to look within our region and find doctors who are competent, who are compatible to the system that we have in this country. We are a country and we have our standards and doctors that we bring into this country must meet those standards as well. But the bigger problem we have is funding. Now, we can't, we can't source those help because we simply don't have the money to bring them on board now. He said the government is looking at some short-term measures and also some long-term measures. And one long-term measure is to increase the capacity so that we can produce the number of doctors that we need in the country. The government has given the direction to the university to actually allow the medical school to become a university of its own so that it can produce more doctors to address this issue. This is a very big issue. Now, we won't have any, any answers in the near future, the way we are progressing. Unless we grow our economy, we will still have problems with employing more people, number one. Esther Gane, National MTV News. During question time this morning in Parliament, member for Kundiawa Gembol, Dilu Mugua, directed a question to Internal Security Minister inquiring the investigation progress of certain high-profile cases in the country. Mr Mugua also questioned the progress of a drug bust involving an expatriate. H10, Kundiawa Gembok MP, questioned if high-profile crimes, such as the recent election mayhem experienced in almost all parts of the country, are still being investigated. Furthermore, Mr. Mugua said in a recent drug bust in Port Mosby, no arrests have been made so far and queried if police investigations are continuing. He further questioned on when investigations will be completed and shared for the general public to know. The first one is in relation to the uh, election mayhem in 2022 national election. Uh, police informed the media some time ago that uh, uh, there's a list of high-profile cases that they will investigate and prosecute and make some arrests when necessary. So my question to the minister is, can the minister inform the House on the progress of those investigations? Has anyone 
whether it be candidate or supporters, been arrested in the election violence, particularly in the islands region. Now, the second uh, question is in relation to the uh, cocaine bust uh, that was found in a small plane outside of the LNG processing plant at the Caution Bay outside Port Mosby. Now, the Australian pilot was arrested, but we don't have any arrest for any Papua New Guineans that have been involved or perpetually involved. And for such a clandestine operation, we know there's many other players that are involved. So can the minister shed some light on the police investigations? In responding, Minister Tiamalili assured Mr. Mugua that a detailed report will be presented to him in the next sitting of parliament. Uh, Tupla, very important question. And if you allow me, uh, in our next sitting, we can pro- properly provide him an uh, informed and detailed uh, report uh, on your question. Lindy Suharupa, National MTV News. The border agreement between PNG and Indonesia government caters for the setting of policies and guidelines that allows the exchange of information and development policies, recognition of indigenous land rights, border security and many other border issues. The agreement is reviewed and signed every 10 years, the first in 1993, then in 2003, and the last review was in 2015. However, it was never brought to Parliament for debate and was left pending for the last eight years. The ratification. Minister for Foreign Affairs and Trade Justin Kachenko brought the paper before Parliament today to be passed. Given the term of the agreement will lapse this year, hence the government needs to sign so it can be reviewed and rectified before a new one is signed again. It is now more than ever urgent for this Parliament to ratify this agreement as this year 2023 will be the revision year for this arrangement. However, members of the parliament, including the member for Vani Mogwin, Belden Nama, ask that the agreement be carefully looked at before the government agrees to it. He cited the lack of government's attention on border issues, such as proper border demarcation and illegal crossing of PNG and Indonesian citizens. We cannot turn a blind eye on this. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I propose that this particular treaty be withheld, allow my committee as the Permanent Parliamentary Committee on Defense, Foreign Affairs and Trade to review it before we actually sign it. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. ECP Governor Alan Bird expressed disappointment over the lack of attention from the government to address border issues, including the border agreement, saying it is long overdue. Why does it take so long for an important border treaty to arrive on the floor of parliament? I mean, a wrong blown minister of foreign affairs, and I said, I'm not going to work. I'm going to work. I'm going to work. What happened to all the other foreign ministers? Where were they sleeping? What happened to all the secretaries for the past eight years? All me going to work. work. Edson Kuso, National MTV News. With the renovation and building of new air- airports in different parts of the country, member for MAPRI Gabriel Capri's queried on whether or not there are plans in place for the rehabilitation of Boram Airport in Nisipik province. In the absence of the Transport and Civil Aviation Minister Walter Snowbelt, Prime Minister Marape stood in to answer the question that was raised. In our national parliament and the Mr. Capris, before asking his question, says there are a lot of visitors travelling into the province, for instance. The recent visit by the Australian Prime Minister and the airport needs to get a facelift for the comfort of all who are travelling in and out of the province. He asked if there are plans in place for the refurbishment of the airport. We look, look or plan the all airports, including the terminals, terminal buildings. Some of the centers all got uh, refurbished, uh, new plan, new plan facilities all the building will have. Uh, recently, the Panama a good plan airport, Manus a good plan terminal building. Na we look ask him the question, Nicolong, Prime Minister. Uh, one of the time, government got planned by building new plan, terminal building, 
that we work. In response, Prime Minister says the government has plans not only to rebuild the terminal, but to also extend the runways. Me like giving Belize, people belong Isipik, <coughs> now all traveling public who said I use him. Uh, we work as well as all our uh, international visitors who said uh, come in and out through that part of our country with the WeWork airport is a uh, strategic uh, airport. And the airport extension has been uh, completed, but I want to inform this house, the people of uh, WeWork East Epic, we're asking <coughs> uh, National Airport uh, Corporation and the Program Transport Department to extend the program to ex uh, uh, allow for extension of the runaway and also include a new terminal a building to be built befitting uh, we work as an important hub economic hub as well as a he says it is one of the busiest terminal and they will do the rehabilitation work samantha solomon national mtv news the marape rosso government has decided to close the papua new guinea trade office in taiwan Foreign Affairs Minister Justin Techenko announced that there isn't any sufficient economic benefit and the poor behavior of Papua New Guinea's representatives in Taiwan had tarnished the country's reputation. Techenko denied the move was in concession with China as Australia and PNG works on a broad security treaty to be signed in April. These were the scenes captured last year by CCTV that made headlines for all the wrong reasons when a PNG diplomat from the PNG trade office assaulted his wife and an employee of a restaurant in an apparent drunken raid at a Taipei City restaurant last September. Since that incident, the Foreign Affairs Minister Justin Chichenko promised a major overhaul of the department which has led to the recall and termination of the diplomat in question and now the announcement that the trade office will be closed. As you'll know, we were completely embarrassed and ridiculed by the behaviour of certain officers that were running that trade office last year. And uh, they were all called back immediately because of their uh, behavior. Minister Chichenko alluding to no economic benefit as another reason why the trade office will be closed in Taipei. We have done a full analysis over the last uh, 12 months on the aspects of that office uh, to see if it was working, if it was uh, viable to keep economically uh, and done a full assessment on the office, trade office in Taipei. Um, from the Department of Foreign Affairs, Trade, uh, we've come to the conclusion that the office was uh, no longer needed. The announcement of the Foreign Affairs Minister comes at a time when geopolitics in the Pacific region gains traction. The United States and China are vying for Pacific Island nations as the global economic and military rivalry between the two powers escalates. Only 14 nations recognize Taiwan, which Beijing regards as a rebel province, but many have de facto diplomatic representation in the form of trade or economic offices. In the Pacific, the number of countries that recognize Taiwan dwindled to four from six after the Solomon Islands and Kiribati switched their recognition to Beijing in 2019. Chichenko was resolute when asked if the office was closed due to pressure from the east. According to Chichenko, the Papua New Guinea trade office in Taiwan will be replaced by a PNG Taipei economic office staffed by a business liaison official and located in Port Moresby. Rocky Iso, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to National MTV News. As question time commenced in today's parliament sitting this morning, member for Mendy Munihu, Rafael Tonpi, raised a question regarding rural police stations. He said his electorate in the Southern Highlands province is in the rural setting, hence pressing law and order issues have to be taken all the way to the provincial capital for police attention. Mendy Munihu, being one of the hotspot areas of frequent law and order problems, 
Local member Rafael Tonpi questioned Internal Security Minister if there are plans to build rural police stations, clarifying that Mendi Munihu desperately needs one. So, so Mendi Munihu district no got police station blocking yet. All Narla district got police station. Therefore, me like just asking one la simple question, long Minister. Uh, suppose you got plan of putting one one police station or one one district. Can we have one police station for maybe built in maybe Munio rural government station? In response, Minister responsible for internal security, Peter Tiamalili Jr., clarified that he has instructed all provincial police commanders to have a close consultation with district members for policing plans in their respective electorates. Minister Tsiamalili Jr. also encouraged members to have everyone in their electorate registered through the National Identification Project, or PNG NID, in order for the government to deliver services accordingly. Uh, all PPCs were asked to uh, interface with the members so that you under your district uh, development plan, you capture the type of infrastructure you require. Now, me puti me long member, certainly this la development long, site long, you identify him station, it must be captured in your plan. Me can just give him your belly see or some, uh, as, as long as you've identified it in your uh, plan and you've consulted with the PPC and you've signed off, uh, we will certainly support and intervene uh, in providing that infrastructure support. Minister Tiamalili Jr. stated that once district plans are available to respective PPCs, including for the Southern Highlands Province, the department will assist. Lindy Suharupa, National MTV News. The Coconuts Industry Corporation has received another price support from the government to start rolling out its programs for 2023. Managing Director for Kik Alan Ako, upon receiving the price support check, assured the government that the industry will deliver to the country. Managing Director Alan Ako said the price support has boosted the production level of copra in the country. With the price support, white copra is going for three kina per kilo, while dry copra is two kina per kilo. He said this has seen farmers producing more copra. And so the price support that has uh, come in will obviously return investment or double investment to the, to the government. Mr. Ako said the previous government has given the industry 4 million kina for price support and the industry has given back 8.5 million kina to the country. He noted that the coconut industry is worth 500 million kina with more than 2.6 million people in the country involved in the industry. We consume close to 3 mil 300 million nuts a year in this country. And if you put a kina against that, Obviously, the domestic economy generates 300 million kina. Minister for Agriculture Aya Tambua said the government is focusing also on downstream processing. He said funding will be made available to KIK to assist copra farmers in Medang province to start processing coconut oil. Cynthia Maku, National MTV News. Gulf rubber farmers are to benefit from the price support and freight subsidiary from the government that will be given to the rubber industry to support them. Chairperson of the Rubber Board, Josephine Kenny, said for this year, 2023, Gulf will be included in the price support program to revive rubber tapping in the province. Chairperson for the Rubber Board, Josephine Kenny, said the board is focusing on reviving rubber tapping in Gulf Province and Sogari in Central Province for this year going forward. She said the prize support that they will receive for this year, Gulf Province will get the bigger share to encourage rubber farmers to tap. That prize support that the government has helped with 300 is going into Gulf and Sogari to get the farmers back into the field. Kenny said they will be looking to increase the cup lump price of rubber in the nation. Price support, we will get some more funding and we'll be looking at increasing the cup lump price. The cup lump price currently in the country is at 
Eddie Toya right around. So we we are supporting that uh, with the 300,000, we are supporting Gulf Sogeri. In terms of freight subsidiary scheme, Kenny said it has really helped the board in transporting rubber from remote areas in places like Musau to Kaviang in the New Island province. The board continued to pay for the freight between Kaviang and Musau. And then from Musau to Port Mosby, it's also 12,000 kina. The freight is so expensive. The government is not wrong. It's going in the right direction by putting price support and freight support. The rubber board thanked the government for the initiative to support the farmers. Cynthia Maku, National MTV News. Two days to go before the 11th Governor General of PNG will be elected on the floor of Parliament. So far, three names have been endorsed with the Clerk of Parliament, incumbent Governor General Se Bob Dadai, and two other prominent Papua New Guineans are in the race for the post of the Governor General. So far, three names have been endorsed for the race for the Governor-General post. Incumbent Governor-General Grand Chief Sir Bob Dudai is seeking another term. Also in the running for the post of Governor-General is former Member of Parliament and Senior Lecturer in Law at the University of Papua New Guinea and National Alliance Strongman Stephen Pokowin. The third person in the running is former PNG High Commissioner to the UK, Winnie Kiap. After 47 years, a female has raised her hand for the vice regal post. Miss Kiap was endorsed by Central Governor Rufina Pita. When Parliament sits this Thursday, the 19th of January, the first order of business is to see if incumbent Governor General Grand Chief Sir Bob Dudai has the numbers to be part of the secret vote. And 79 votes is the number that the Pangu endorsed candidate needs to muster before taking part with Pokowin and Kia for the vote for the Governor General post. A secret ballot will then take place and the person from the trio with the lowest number will be eliminated and another secret ballot will be taken and it will then be known if we have a new representative for King Charles III of the incumbent has been voted back in. Once the GJ is announced, Chief Justice Sir Gibuna Gibbs Salika will then enter the Chamber of Parliament to swear in the Governor General. Rocky Iso, National MTV News. And now looking at the Nest Fund market report, the Kina closed unchanged at 0.2840 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina was buying 0.2765 US dollars, 0.3941 Australian dollars, 0.2479 Euro, 34.3 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York closed, gold is trading lower, coffee closed higher, cocoa closed higher, Copra closed lower, palm oil closed lower, crude oil is trading lower, and copper closed lower. On the stock market, the Dow Jones closed higher, the ASX 200 is trading lower, the All Ordinaries is trading lower. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. You're watching National MTV News. BSP Retail Group General Manager Daniel Found says in their continued efforts to improving their automated telemachine services, BSP is installing 120 new ATMs and is working to ensure ATMs are available for customers to easily access cash. BSP Retail Group General Manager said so far 27 old machines in the nation's capital have been replaced with 93 more to be installed by the end of March 2023 in NCD and Ley. BSP Retail Group General Manager said these new machines have also been installed at Waterfront, TST4 Mile, BSP House, Barili, Koki and Haba City. Port Mosby General Hospital, BSP Gardens Commercial Centre and Port Mosby Brands ATMs will be replaced in the coming weeks. In addition to installing new ATMs, BSP has taken a number of other measures which has been an improvement in ATM uptimes. These include software fixes, improved online monitoring capability, increased level of resourcing for ATM management and training for all technical staff. 
He explained that the quality of banknotes does, however, affect ATM uptimes, and while BSP does a significant amount of work to ensure ATM quality cash is available through their muting processes. Unfortunately, at times, the poor quality of PNG banknotes does impact ATM hardware. BSP operates a fleet of 330 ATM machines in PNG, including 121 ATMs in NCD. ATM outages can be caused by a range of internal and external factors. Internal factors include ensuring the hardware and software components of the ATM machines are operational, ensuring there is sufficient supply of acceptable quality notes and ensuring there is available resourcing to manage ATMs both within bank premises and at their large number of remote ATMs. He further added that external factors can include a general security environment, accessibility of remote premises where ATMs reside, power and backup generator power availability, and cash denomination quality and quantity. The vast majority of outages continue to be caused both by note quality and due to more frequent and prolonged power blackouts throughout the country. BSP Deputy Chief Operating Officer Guy Thomas said BSP monitors ATMs 24-7 to ensure BSP is aware of issues as soon as they occur. He said many issues are able to be reset remotely, so will result in only a short downtime. BSP encourages customers to contact the BSP call center if there are any ATM machines that are not operational, and BSP teams will attend to them as soon as possible. BSP also encourages customers to utilize digital means to facilitate their transactions, including BSP Mobile Banking, which is a far more secure and convenient channel for customers to use. Esther Gane, National MTV News. Let your lives be an inspiration to others and a beacon of hope that draws them closer to Christ was the encouragement given to three newly professed members of the AD Sisters congregation. Cardinal Sir John Ribat, Archbishop of Port Mosby, made this statement of encouragement during a special Eucharistic celebration held on Sunday at the Nazareth Annunciation Church at Laloki. The religious all from Milinbe province were Maria Kwedidi, Rhonda Gwedi and Anne Vaite. Cardinal Ribat presided over the Mass as its main celebrant. In his homily, Cardinal Ribat reminded the nuns to always remember God in their lives and highlighted the importance of a strong prayer life. He encouraged them to build a strong prayer life to closely follow. He highlighted to the nuns to constantly remind themselves of God's call in their life so that they may draw strength, joy, and faith in Him to live their lives confidently. On behalf of the nuns, Sister Anne in her speech extended a gratitude to everyone that helped and supported them throughout their journey. The ceremony had the religious profession of vows where the sisters knelt in front of the altar with burning candles and pronounced their three evangelical vows. All three signed their vows on the altar as the Superior General and Cardinal Ribat witnessed their signing. Estagane, National MTV News. International Transport Workers Federation today conducted their first workshop in PNG. Representative from the ITF Australia, Scott McDine, said today's workshop may be seen as a refresher, but it was important to keep the workers in the transport industry updated. The first day of the International Transport Workers Federation workshop was conducted today by ITF International at Port Moresby's Nature Park. They saw representatives from various unions in the country, including Air New Guinea's engineering reps, PNG Air Workers Union, Energy Workers Union, and members of the National Airlines Employees Association of Papua New Guinea. Representative and head of ITF Sydney, Australia, Scott McDine, who was present and part of the workshop, said today's workshop was all about getting workers from each union familiar with their scope of work and best practices to understanding the rules and regulations that they adhere to under the policy guidelines of individual transport sectors. 
and we're contracting a workshop and training sessions to assist in giving um, the union organisers and the union executives um, the skills and the capacity to be able to negotiate directly with the employers. While ITF has 20 million members worldwide and over 200 unions affiliated in the Pacific region, the workshop aims to upskill and enhance the transport sector globally. He said for the PNG Charter, the sessions were based on the do's and don'ts in the industry to the approach one can take, whether it be issues with staff welfare to issues arising at work and many others. We will be able to have um, the unions with the capacity like the NAEA, the Maritime and Transport Workers Union, the Energy Workers Union, PNG Air, that they will have a broadening of skills. President for the National Airlines Employees Association of Papua New Guinea, Noel Saray, said while other interventions are to be discussed to make ITF progress for the PNG Charter, what's more important is to align the knowledge and skills of the transport industry, whether it be sea transport, air and land, and their workers to meet international standards. They learn something on uh, power, interest, value and organizing how, organ how to organize foundations, so, a federation, how to mobilize membership and all this and how to negotiate with uh, employers. He said the workshop is a good start for the unions that were present today during the workshop. The International Transport Workers Federation or ITF workshop will end on Thursday. You're watching National MTV News. Trukai Sports is next. Stay with us. Tukai Sports. Welcome to Tukai Sports. High performance training facilities are now open and ready for athletes from various sporting federations to occupy upon request and upon approval from both the PNG Olympic Committee and the PNG Sports Foundation. Director for PNG High Performance Cornelius Papau said his team at the High Performance Center are ready to welcome the athletes. Since the opening of the High Performance Gym last week, all 26 sporting federations in the country can now take their athletes for training at the High Performance Gym at the Torama Aquatic Sports Facility. According to Mr. Papau, the team at High Performance are waiting to receive athletes from various federations upon request from the PNG Olympic Committee. Train on squads for various sporting codes will be using the gym at the Aquatic Center before they can cut down the squad numbers come mid-2023. The operations uh, kicked off uh, last last week. A lot of uh, cleaning up and preparation in the gym, moving of equipment, uh, both our gym and also the our operation office and the sports medicine clinic. So we're looking forward to uh, uh, having the, the Team PNG athletes uh, to Solomon Islands Pacific, Island, uh, Pacific Games in uh, November. So very exciting time, very easy, uh, busy calendar for us also. He said individual athletes and team sports will be coming in for both the morning and afternoon sessions so that the facility is equally used, reason being that there is only one available gym for the athletes to use. And uh, things, our planning is still, still be annual even for coaching and athletes traveling down to Australia to have the trainings and stuff. Uh, so we're, we're working, we're, we're picking up slowly with our, our, our planning and events uh, throughout the year. Uh, very important, important at the moment now is our, our team PNG to Solomon Islands, which is a very uh, important task for our CEO and also uh, the government of the day. And so we are working with them and asking all of the divisional uh, heads uh, and divisions uh, in PNG Sport Foundation and also stakeholders, PNGOs and other stakeholders, sponsors to also come on board to support us deliver team PNG to Solomon Islands. He said strength and conditioning is vital for the athletes and that the prevention of injury is very important so that athletes preparing to represent the country must be fit and healthy. The high performance gym will be open from Monday to Thursday and will only be used by athletes preparing for the Pacific Games this year. 
The Clash of the Wards Blues and Maroons played its game two at the Hohola Ipi Park. They saw the Tokarara Blues and the Hohola Maroons battle it out. Hohola off-season president Kambi Ingiman highlighted that the Clash of the Wards is aimed at uniting youths in Wards 7 and 8 in the Mosby Northwest electorate through Rugby League. The Clash of the Wards Game 2 began at 3.30 p.m. at the Hohola EP Park. In the opening half, the Hohola Maroons dominated the Clash with a four-point lead as the Tokarara Blues trailed scoreless. Hohola off-season president Kambi Ingiman highlighted on the importance of the Clash of the Wards. We'll play good opportunity like expose him or monkey go outside or play all diesel cup team or play all big lol rap game number so this like initiative and people put it in the area and blues and maroons talk what eight versus uh all uh what seven lo play my uh, best blow blues best blow maroon in game one which was competed two weeks ago the hohola maroons won by six to nil over the tokarara blues the winner from Game 2 alongside the winner from Game 1 will form a team to compete against the NCD Vipers Development Squad on the 28th of January 2023 in a friendly clash. Lisa Puni, Chukai Sports. The National Gaming Control Board has come on board again this year to support the Rugby League off-season competition of the Ipatas Cup. A total of 300,000 kina was given to the committees for this year's tournament. Minister responsible for NGCB Manasse Makiba while presenting the check to the patron and governor for Enga, Se Peter Ipatas, says rugby league in PNG has evolved over the years and this competition has contributed significantly to the growth of this sporting code since it started. NGCB has been supporting the competition for the last 10 years and this year marks the 11th year. Mr. Makiba also acknowledged Se Peter Ipatas for providing avenues for youths to showcase their talents. Trukai Sports continues after the break. Stay with us. <laughs> You're watching Trukai Sports. Moving to overseas sports now and Tennis Australia has announced that Russian and Belarusian flags are now banned from the tournament effective immediately. Kyrgios Day. He's supposed to be playing at Nick Kyrgios Arena, otherwise known as John Kane Arena. We call it Nick Kyrgios Arena, but it's not to be. But let's talk about the good news and those gutsy Aussie performances. Let's start with an epic five-setter. Rinky Hidjakata. He defeated Yannick Hanf Hanfman, the German qualifier, in a five-setter. Not only did he defeat him, he came back from two sets down to do just that. Jason Kubler is through to the second round due to a straight sets win. And last but not least, one of our favourites, Karina, it's John Millman. He is through after an epic five-setter. This is zero surprise. John Millman loves a five-setter. He was two sets to one down against Mark Andrea Husler of Switzerland. Now, just to put this win into context, Husler is ranked 51 in the world. John Millman at 140. But he has rallied from two sets down to win. And Karina, the only way I can describe the crowd is Millmania gone wild. <laughs> I was on Rod Laver Arena Karina, and I was getting text messages. I was watching Igish Biontek saying, why aren't you at this John Millman match? It is wild. Get off Rod Laver Arena and come over here. So congratulations to John Millman. Such a good guy, Karina. He is such a good family. I love that he got that wild card and he just proved exactly why you give John Millman a wild card. Now some big names have booked their place in the next round last night. Despite having his racket stolen by a ball kid, Rafael Nadal is through to the second round.
thankfully for Rafa's fans. Also, I mentioned Iga Sviantek there, the world number one. She is true. She was taking on Yuli Niemeyer of Germany. Now, this was not an easy win for Iga Sviantek. In fact, she was in trouble, Karina, in the second set. She took the first set, but then she was down a break in the second set. And I happened to be sitting really close to Niemeyer's German coach. Now, coaching is actually allowed at the Australian Open this year. And the way it works is when the player is on the same side as their coach, they can talk to their coach. When they're on the opposite side, they can use hand signals. Now, I got pretty good at reading the hand signals. For example, her coach, Karina, would clap three times after she lost a really important point. This is Niemeyer. Just to kind of... That ends Trukai Sports. The Money Plus weather report is next. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. Weather forecast for the next 24 hours. Southern region, Port Mosby becoming partly cloudy with few showers possible. Alatau partly cloudy with few showers. Daru, Kerima and Pokondeta partly cloudy with possible brief showers. In the Masse region, Lei and Medeng partly cloudy with few showers. Wewek and Vanimo partly cloudy. In the New Guinea Islands region, Loringau and Kimbe, cloudy periods with few showers. KV and Kokopo and Rabau, few showers. In the Highlands region, Mount Hagen, Mendi and Wabeg, few showers and possible thunderstorm. Goroka and Kundiawa, possible brief showers. Waters of Southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait to Daru to Kiwai Islands to Kerima to Yul Island to Hood Point to Samurai Islands seas 0.5 to 1.3 meters. Waters of Samurai Islands to Cape Bogil and Eastern and Western Milin Bay Islands seas 0.5 to 1.3 meters. Waters north of Cape Bogil to Yuen Gulf to Finshafen seas 0.3 to 1.3 meters. Waters of Finchafen through Vitis Dempia Straits to CSC and Long Island seas 1.5 to 2.5 meters. Waters of Long Island to Medang to Bogia to Wiwek to Vanimo and Northern PNG Indonesian border seas 0.5 to 1 meter. Waters of Manus and its western group of islands seas 0.5 to 1 meter. Waters of New Island to East New Britain and Bougainville seas 0.5 to 1.3 meters. Ocean forecast coral sea sees slight to moderate west to northwest winds up 10 to 20 knots. Solomon Sea sees slight northwest winds of 10 to 15 knots. Bismarck Sea sees smooth to slight northwest winds of 5 to 15 knots. And Pacific Ocean sees smooth northeast to easterly winds of 5 to 10 knots. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And that wraps up the news, sports and weather for Tuesday, the 17th of January 2023. From the entire news team, pleasant viewing. Bye for now.
This news program was proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and Gold Nuggets.